Good morning. Good morning. I'm Linda. I'm going to give it just a second. Carla told me not to get on too early, and I did yesterday. So I'm going to give it just a moment. Thank you for joining me. Hi, everybody. I'm, um, all my life, I've always been the one that wants to be early. And I've learned through different experiences is sometimes it's not good to be too early. And I think social media is one of them because it takes it a minute or two to catch up. So I tried to wait until my clock finished chiming, until I made sure that it was after 10, after 10 o'clock. I hope I did okay. Anyway, welcome to Pinky Mouse Sisters in the Kitchen. Um, I'm by myself today and I will be by myself again tomorrow. Um, I don't want y'all to worry, but I am going to ask for prayers for my sister Mary and also for little Linda. Uh, they both have tested positive for COVID. Uh, they are both on meds, and um, Mary is doing really good. She's been up this morning. She's not running any temp, and um, Linda, we hadn't heard from her yet this morning, but um, Carla's going to... Um, uh, check on her again in a few minutes. She, we, we think that she's just sleeping. So everyone remember to pray for Mary and little Linda. Pray for Carla. She's at Mary's. She is uh, being very careful, but she is taking care of Mary. And um, I'm fine. Carla's fine. And so until they're in the clear, I'm going to be doing um, the cooking and doing the program. I assured Mary that uh, y'all will support me just like you would support her if um, uh, if it was her doing the video. So thank you all for watching. And we're going to do something fun this morning. I do have one more announcement, a couple more announcements to make. Uh, the book signing in uh, down below Lufkin, we're going to put that off for a while. Just We would just want to make sure that everybody is in the clear. So we'll announce later on this summer when we're going to have the book signing. So, um, and I'll try to announce that again tomorrow too. So, um, and thank you, uh, Jennifer Asker for the beautiful chimes that you sent, um, Mary and I, and I believe you said it was part of the set. Um, so thank you so much. I only opened one box because I wanted to check with you to make sure there was a mistake that we got them. And um, so thank you very much. It's very sweet and they're really beautiful. And we'll get those hung up out under the carport soon. So um, I miss my sister. It's not the same. It's not as fun without her. But um, uh, she would do the same for me and we're just gonna carry on. And I appreciate um, everyone hanging in there with me and be sure to like this video and be sure to share this video. Um, I'm making lemon curd today, and we are using um, Imperial Sugar. We are sponsored by Imperial Sugar. It's extra fine, and we used that a long time before we ever, were ever sponsored. So I wanted to also make sure I said that. I hope I've got this set up where y'all can see it. I'm going to get this curd done, and then we're going to move over to the counter to, um, to work on something fun. So if you've never made lemon curd, don't let it intimidate you. It is very easy to make. I bought jars of it for a long time before I ever started making it, and the homemade is so much better. Not to say, not to even mention how much uh, cheaper it is making it yourself. So um, I have. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna show you. I zested. I washed my lemons and zested them. Uh, using our great zester. This is the best zester I've ever used. And when you're zesting lemon or lime or orange, you want to make sure that you wrap it in plastic wrap. It dries out almost like momentarily. So you want to keep it, um, you want to keep it wrapped. So I've got that set here aside. I'm using a double boiler 
and um, I've got my water boiling. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Um, I've got, I'm probably going to add a little bit. I've got some extra water in the back just because I didn't want to wait till this come up to a boil. And this is hot. I'm just going to add just a tiny bit. You want to add it to, um, you don't want to add too much water in it because it'll come over the sides. But there's a little rim in there. If you notice, I try to make sure that my water doesn't go over that rim. And um, I used to have a whole bunch of these double bores that I used before I started making uh, pie filling in the microwave. But there are some things that you need to um, to use a double bore for, and lemon curd is one of them. So um, let me just wrench my hands real quick. And I have juiced four lemons, and they were big lemons. Um, and I strained it to make sure that it didn't have any seeds in it. And I'm using a half a cup, and this is freshly squeezed. You, I would not use the bottle. I would use fresh squeezed lemon juice. It makes a big difference. So my boiler is hot, and I've got six little uh, tablespoons here of butter, and I'm going to add this um, just to kind of get that melting. And I've got um, all of my eggs separated except one. I just wanted to show you um, that I'm using the uh, our pepper chip egg separator with the extender on it. These are fantastic because you can use them on big bowls or little ones. And I'm just going to do my last egg. You want your eggs at room temperature. And that's something I'm very particular about. I don't like eggs sitting out at room temperature because I don't want them ruining. But I've watched these real closely and I've made sure that I didn't leave them out longer than I had to. And I'm, I'm a little bit, probably a little bit more particular about that than some, uh, some might be, but um, I just, um, I'm just real careful with it. So I'm gonna get all this white stuff out of here. I don't want any white in my, in my uh, egg yolk. And I have not busted the first egg yolk with this separator. And I busted that one on purpose. But uh, these, this is really a, a, good, uh, a good little gadget to use. So I've got, um, I've got my four egg yolks. These are um, extra large, I mean not extra large, they're large egg yolks. I'm using two-thirds cup of sugar. And this is imperial sugar. It's extra fine. Uh, my butter is melting. I'm hoping that you can see it. Um, it's not completely melted, but it's partially melted. And I'm gonna pour my sugar in there. And I'm gonna pour my lemon juice in there. And then I'm gonna get these egg yolks in there. And I'm gonna get these stirred in real quick. Because I don't want them to scramble. And it shouldn't because it's not in direct heat. But you still, you don't want to put them in there and walk away and come back two or three minutes later. You want to go ahead. So I'm just going to scramble all this or whisk, <laughs> scramble, I'm going to whisk all this together. And you just want to cook it. And it doesn't take long to cook this. Um, and I'll tell you how you do it. It's, you know, I've already told you the ingredients. It's very simple. Uh, not many ingredients at all. Uh, and I just realized I didn't get enough eggs in here. I'm glad I looked at my recipe. So I'm going to turn this down and get some more eggs out so I can get the rest of my eggs. I know what I'm doing. I did a double batch. So it takes eight, eight egg yolks instead of four. I'm really glad I checked that recipe. get these others in there real quick. When you're used to cooking without a recipe, it's a little bit different than it is when you're online because you're you're just you're trying to get the stuff done and you don't realize it until you happen to look. So I'm glad I looked. So it's not four egg yolks, it's eight. Because this is a double recipe actually. It's not um, it's not a single recipe, it's double. I like a lot of lemon curd, especially because my cakes are thick and I want enough in it 
that you can actually taste it. So we'll get these separated real quick. Whoops! Bounce that one right in there like a tennis ball. Not to worry. Get that right out. That's got a little white in it. I'll take care of that in a minute. You know, used to when Molly or Mama or our aunts were cooking, they had multiple stuff going at one time. Of course, they wasn't filming a show, but um, they didn't think nothing about having all the burners on the stove full of something they were cooking because they were cooking big meals. And um, so they had to be cooking more than one thing at a time. When um, men folks work in the field, and they come in, they're hungry, they ex they're expecting a hearty meal. So they got there cooking multiple things at one time. And when you're doing a, a live program like this, it's uh, as when you're doing it by yourself, it's a little more difficult to do multiple things at one time. Okay, we got all the egg yolks in there, so we're going we're gonna to make sure that this got the right amount of ingredients in it. Carla is um, on the other end monitoring uh, the computer. Hopefully there's not too many people on that's going to be bothering us today. And when I say that, I'm talking about people that we have to constantly be deleting their post. I think Carla calls them lover boys. Always wanting to befriend somebody. Alright, make sure I got everything in here and I've got everything in here. We'll put the lemon zest in at the last. And I'm going to get another spatula out and another spoon. So when I get ready to, you'll know when this is ready because it will coat the back of a spoon. And I'm sure that many of y'all have made this before, um, but um, it's, I've been making it for a very long time. I make a lemon blueberry cake, which is just out of this world. I actually did a wedding cake that was a lemon blueberry a couple of years ago and it was really, really good. It was, I used the blueberries that I picked from Panola Garden uh, Orchard and uh, it was a delicious cake. They said there wasn't a crumb of it left, and I think even the bride barely even got a taste of it, and it was a huge cake. And that was the same um, wedding that I did that um, the groom wanted deep dish pies. He didn't want a cake, he wanted pies. So um, I made them in spring form pans, and if y'all have never made a deep dish fruit pie, they're very heavy. And uh, I had cake lifters that I lifted it up from the bottom of the springform pan and actually set it in a box to transport over to the venue. And then when I got there, they had the cake plates to set them on. So I used the cake lifter again and set it on the... Uh, the beautiful cake plates they had, and the, it was at a hotel, and the chef actually came out of the kitchen and came in there to see how I did that, and it was so funny. I knew they wasn't going to tear up, but I think he wasn't quite sure, and they were beautiful. I have pictures of them, and it's, it was very rustic because uh, the juices run kind of run over the sides, and it had a double crust. And they were about they were about this this thick, full of fruit. And they said the same thing about them. There wasn't a, wasn't a spoonful of any of them left. I did an apple. I did a a, a mixed berry, and I did a blackberry. And the mixed berry, I had blueberries and strawberries, and um, um, blackberries in it. And they were all beautiful. Okay, so I'm hoping that you can see. I can tell this is getting thick. And uh, I'm going to check it in a minute with the spoon. You'll see how quick this um, comes together and how little bit of time it takes to make this. 
Now the other thing with making lemon curd, and I didn't get out a bowl, so I'll have to get out one, but you want to transfer it into a bowl from your pan, and then you want to put plastic wrap um, on top, right on top of this curd. You want it to touch it. Uh, if you don't, it's going to form a film on it, and you won't be able to get that film off. So I'm going to check this real quick here and see. And you can see that it's coated the back of that spoon. Now I'm going to double check one more thing. Whoops. Well, this is a messy day today. I'll get that up. Got my little Norwich sponge here. I ordered the other day, and this is my first time to use one. And I'll have to wash that in a minute. But I'm going to I'm going to test the temperature just because it's supposed to reach 160 degrees. So just as a precaution, I'm going to test it to make sure that it's at the right temperature. I'm actually going to set it off in the burner because I don't want it to keep cooking. And this is going to make sure that the eggs are at a safe um, spot that they're not going to um, that they're that they're safe to eat. Yep, it's 164. So we're good to go with this. So I'm going to set that there for a second and um, get this out of the way. Get my sponge over here, and then I'm going to get a bowl to put this in. Good stuff. It adds so much flavor to uh, to a cake. And what I do, and I'll show y'all tomorrow because I'm making the cake tomorrow that I'm going to use this in our own. So um, if you're making a two layer or three layer, uh, this goes between the layers. And my buttercream is is pretty sweet. A lot of people tone theirs down, and and I do tone mine down some, but it is sweet because it's got a lot of powdered sugar in it. So um, this lemon curd is tart, and it, isn't that beautiful? Such a beautiful, bright yellow color. I'm gonna pour this hot water in here so I can, won't have such a hard time washing this. My lady used to wash dishes and throw the dishwater out the back door for the chickens. Now I think about that so many times when um, I'm cooking about how they, um, what a hard time they had and they didn't know it was a hard time because it's all they knew. That's That was what they did. That was their life. But uh, we have all these fancy small appliances and nice cook stoves and we don't have to put wood in and we have nice hot water that we can wash our dishes with. We don't have a dishwasher. We have had one before in another house that we lived in, but um, we used it very few times. Mike keeps our water, our hot water heater set, set on 140 degrees, and it's so hot the water will burn you if you're not careful. Now, if you'll see, I've got the plastic um, completely down on this uh, lemon curd. It's completely covered, so um, it's not going to it's not going to form a, a film. And I'm going to set this aside over here. This needs to cool. Oh, I forgot to put my zest in it. Oh, my goodness. Well, I sure am glad I saw it sitting there so I can stir this in real quick. I'll get another piece of plastic wrap since that one's messed up. I'm just going to 
just doing all kinds of mistakes this morning. I'm just going to stir this in here. This zest also gives it an extra um, ump to it. So I think I got that stirred in there pretty good. Let's see. Give me another piece of plastic wrap. And I use stretch type. I first found this in a big lots in Omaha, Nebraska. And I just loved it. And I found some in California at a store there. But um, you can't find it in stores around here. I think maybe some, some stores carry it in some areas. But um, I order it um, off of Amazon. Stretch type and the freezer uh, part is freeze tight and I use both of those. That's my wrap that I use. Okay, I think I got this settled back down here good. So I got my plastic wrap settled there and then we're going to move the camera. Whoops, sorry about that. I didn't mean to bump it. I'm going to move the camera back over here to the counter. And we're going to roll and make some flowers. So bear with me a second while I get it moved. Make sure that I get it low enough that you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully that'll be good. So it's about to get hot. We've had some pretty hot weather here in East Texas, and it's going to get hotter. So um, for all of you, and I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that uh, decorate cakes and have made them for your kids and grandkids throughout the years, I'm a disclaimer right up front, I am not a professional baker. I've said that many times. There may be people watching this show that do what I do a different way. I'm self-taught, so... A lot of it has been by trial and error. So if you see me do something and you don't do it that way, well, you do it the way that you're comfortable with and I do it the way that I'm comfortable with. I've, I've always been kind of, um, um, if there's something I don't know exactly how to do, well, I'll figure out the best way for me. So that's what I'm gonna do today. And I've got lots of little gadgets here. And um, I will tell you that you can do exactly what I'm doing if you want to dress up a cake uh, with very few tools. You do not have to have all this fancy stuff. Um, I bought a lot of stuff when I first started, and I've decorated cakes for years. Back, back even when I was in my really young 20s, I've decorated cakes. But when I got really serious about decorating them a few years ago, I bought lots of stuff and lots of it I didn't need, but I didn't know that at the time. So one thing that you do need is you need um, a set of the little roller balls. <laughs> I think today's goof day. I seem like I'm just goofing, goofing, making mistakes like crazy. Um, you can buy these from Amazon. I believe it's four or five in a set. Uh, these are these are metal. Uh, you can also buy a set that, and I don't have the rest of them in here. But these are these are actually Wilton here. But there's another brand too. I think it's Sugarvale or Sweet Sugar or something that you can buy at Michaels or Walmart. This set is kind of expensive. It's close to forty dollars. Hobby Lobby. Um, it has several tools in it. It has this little spatula in here that I love this little tiny spatula and you cannot buy this separate or at least I've never seen it separate but these are not that expensive and the different sizes they have different balls and this is to thin out your fondant so I think y'all probably heard me say uh, before that you should roll for flowers you should roll fondant so thin that you can read a newspaper through it and so I'm just going to start with a little yellow here. And um, we have, I have different tools. I guess I need to show y'all these before. These are little roll-up flowers. Uh, these are roses. And this is some other kind. And I honestly don't know what kind that is. 
Uh, then you've got the little uh, mash out flowers that you can push down and mash it out. Um, and you've got the moles. Uh, this is a rose here. Um, I've got several of these. This is a leaf if you want imprints, which you can make any of this just by using uh, something in your utility drawer, like a knife or a spoon or something. You can make all kinds of little, um, little. this is like print, the print of a leaf. And if you have leaves in your yard that um, uh, are clean, you can actually use them to make an impression for a leaf. Um, these are uh, different flowers here. One of them is a sunflower. That's another little leaf thing. If you want some leaves, you can uh, press a little tiny bit of fondant. I'll show you that and press it down and it's got these uh, marking, vein markings in it. That's a rose. And then uh, I've got lots and lots of these moles. And then the other thing, uh, these moles here, these are my favorite. These are Katie Sue. These are expensive. Well, this one's not. This is sunflower moles. But um, the Katie Sue moles are, and there's my little butterfly mole. Um, Katie Sue moles are, um, they're a little bit more uh, detailed. They're, they're, um, they're really nice moles. And I'm, I'm almost ashamed to say, but I paid a lot for these moles. Some of them are like 14 or 15 dollars a piece. But you use them over and over and they make gorgeous flowers. This is a jungle. And I'm going to make some of these today. And this is a pansy with the leaves on it. And uh, we're going to put some of these together. And then I won't have time to make everything. But um, I'm going to make a few of all of them. Hopefully I'll be able to. Now these are Wilton. This is a, a set of Wilton cutters for flowers. And this is the large one here. A large rose. This is a small rose. And then this is, um, this is a dogwood. This is one of my favorite. I love this one. And, um, and then we got some more little cutouts here. And sometimes you want to just put something on a cake. If you've ever seen cakes on, um, I don't have time to look at Pinterest and all that Etsy and all that stuff that people look at now. I just do not have the time to do it. But if you look at it and you'll see a cake decorated, uh, sometimes they'll have macaroons on them. They'll have uh, just a mixture of things on a cake and that makes the cake pretty to put different shapes and sizes and like the butterfly I like to put a little tiny butterfly on top of a flower and that looks really authentic and really pretty now when you do find it it has to you have to do it in stages you can't paint wet fondant you have to wait until it dries or at least I found that you couldn't if somebody else knows how to do it well that's fine but I think it needs to dry before you actually paint it. Um, I've got all of the, the little petal dust. I've got a bunch of different kinds of petal dust, different colors, um, galaxy dust, which is really shiny. So there's a lot of different things. And you can see I've got lots of different colors here. This is a leaf or a rose. And um, that's another one of the punch outs. We may use one of these. And then you want you want uh, some paint brushes, some that don't that the uh, the little hairs don't pull out. So if you're going to paint something, I would say invest in a in a set, and they're not expensive. Invest in a set of Wilton uh, brushes. This looks like a makeup brush. It's not. It's a Wilton. It's a Wilton brush. Now this here is I think is a makeup brush, but this one's not, and they've only been used for 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 this purpose. But like when you put the petal dust on there, or, or if it gets uh, little pieces, you can take this and just brush it right off. And there's all kinds of shapes and sizes. Um, these are some of mine that I use a lot. They've got a slanted edge to them. You can tell this is a Wilton because it's got Wilton on it. That's a Wilton. If you stick them in a color, like the edible paints, you wanna make sure that you use only your dark paints use the same brushes every time even though you clean them if you put a dark brush into the pearl white uh, paint it's going to color it because there's just it's just always a little bit something left in there so keep that in mind when you do that so and this is a really pretty um, um, rose pink petal dust here so uh, and those last a long time now y'all may see that I've got a bunch of these little things out here this is actually for paint 
that I'm going to show you what I'm going to use these for because you don't want your petals to be flat. You want to give them some dimension. So uh, that's where these come in at. And I bought this, um, I don't know, a month or so ago. It's a lollipop thing. But I'm going to show you how you can use anything in your kitchen from a spoon to an egg carton to give these flowers dimension. So I hope I'm not boring y'all. I absolutely love making flowers. And I have transported flowers wrapped in bubble wrap 500 miles to go on a cake and not had one break. I made lilies to go on a four-tiered wedding cake a few years ago. And they, they were just, everybody was amazed at these flowers because they're very, very thin and they're very brittle. They're very de delicate, but you can make these. The good thing about it, you can make them ahead of time. And I keep them like in a flat box to where something's not gonna fall on them. And when I'm making a lot of flowers, I'll make a bunch of extra ones because when you're decorating a cake, you may have your focal point with your big flowers and uh, something else that I like to do, and y'all see this tomorrow, I like to mix buttercream flowers with the fondant. It, it's just something about it that it just, it looks, it looks so pretty together. So if you are, if you know you've got a cake to make and you want to practice on it, make them and let them dry and put them in a safe place and they're perfectly fine until you get ready to put them on your cake. So um, I'm going to um, I'm going to get this is just a little paintbrush. This is another little uh, object that's good to to kind of smear color on something. Um, so I'm going to show y'all um, a little bit um, make some. Um, so when I whenever I get some made, I'm going to show y'all what I do with these cups to um, for them to get dimension. If your fondant is a little bit too hard there's two things you can do well three things actually your hands have heat in them so that's going to naturally soften the fondant you can use a tiny tiny bit and this of course is edible you don't need much when you're rolling these out um, and you want to keep this wrapped and once you get your flowers cut before you roll them and get the petals to look like petals you need to keep a plastic wrap on them. So in order to get this a little softer, you can work it with your hands. You can stick it in the microwave, but you gotta be very, very careful with that. I've, I've got it too soft before, and probably anybody that's done that has too. And again, you know, if there are any chefs or any pastry chefs or professional people that's watching me, um, Y'all know I do it the way I want to do it. So I've got a nice little ball, and this is soft enough to work with. You can use a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit of Crisco shortening. Uh, just kind of uh, put it on the fondant, and, and you say, oh, gross, shortening on fondant. Most people don't eat these flowers anyway, even though they're edible, they're for looks. Uh, but the little bit of shortening, if somebody did eat it, it's not going to hurt them, it's shortening. So... Um, I'm going to get my plastic wrap here so I can, because I'm, I'm only going to use a tiny bit of this, um, and I don't want it to dry out. So I'm going to just pinch off a little bit of this, and I'm going to roll. Well, I'm not rolling first. First of all, I'm going to, I'm going to do something with this mold. So, um, okay, so here's my John Cole here. You've got, um, you've got a big, this is the middle. It looks like a fan. That's the big one, and that's the big leaves. And then this is a little one, and that's the little leaves. So this mold here makes two. And um, the main thing when you're working with a mold, you don't want to put too much in it. So use just a little bit. I may have too much there, but I'm going to try it. So you want to press it down. Can everybody see what I'm doing? I hope you can. I can't get the comments over here to see, but I hope you can see what I'm doing. Actually, I didn't get quite enough in there. So I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. If you get too much, you're gonna to have to take an X-Acto knife and cut around, the, uh, cut around the mold, and then that just takes extra time. So you can see that I've got that in there. Only takes a second. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and fill um, um, both of these while I'm doing this. Now, if you're good with sculpting and you're an artist and you can make these shapes and things on your own, you don't need a mold. I'm not an artist. I couldn't even draw a stick. Well, I guess I could draw a stick, but I was not an artist in school. Um, um, I know Mary's grandkids are all artists. Chuck is a good artist, and um, but that is not that is not something that that I was not a talent I was blessed with. Everybody has their own talents, and I've heard people say sometimes, "Well, I don't have any talents," and I think that. Uh, everybody has God-given talents. Maybe you don't realize what you're doing is a talent. Maybe it's talking to somebody, encouraging somebody. Maybe it's you're that person that walks up to an elderly lady and our elderly gentleman or elderly couple and, and strikes up a conversation with them and, and uh, just makes their day. You know, maybe you remind them of somebody that they knew in their childhood or something. So I believe I believe that everybody has talents. I believe that. So, um, next time you hear somebody or next time you think, I don't have any talents, uh, think, think again and, and make sure that you do an inventory and see if you can't see the talent that God gave you. I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses. Mary has uh, things that she does. Mama had things that she done that I would, you would have think I was a daughter. I, I wouldn't know how to do that too. I, I just didn't, I didn't have interest in sewing. I didn't have interest in de designing and decorating and I just never did it. I probably could have learned a lot more when I was younger from mom and Mary if I had, um, if I had been interested in it, but I wasn't. My interest was music. That was my interest the whole time I was growing up. That was my interest. And then I love to bake. I've always loved to bake. And um, so those are the two things that I like to do. I'm not a yard person. I don't like working in the yard. I love plants and I love flowers. But I'm not a person to, to work in the yard to make pretty flowers and pretty, pretty plants. So um, don't, don't feel bad if you think somebody else can do something that you can't do because I'm pretty sure there's something that you can do that nobody else can't do, or maybe can't do it as well as you do. I got a little bit too much in that one, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it go. Now, you don't have to leave this in here as long as I left, left these in here, because um, as soon as you put them in there, see, I've got all four of my little things covered, and I'm, I'm going to need to get some water. I forgot to get some water over here. But um, I want to seal these together, and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. But you'll see that pretty, whoops, the pretty little fan on there with the things. And I'm going to just take this real gentle, and I'm going to make it into like a little, I keep talking, do this too. Now, you can do that by doing a little bit of water on a paintbrush, and I meant to get some water out, and I didn't. But that's your center of your flower. Okay, and then this here, and I'm going to put a little bit of dent in this, and I'm going to put this in here, and just kind of push it down in it. And you can't see this, but I've got a little bit too much in that one, on that one mold. So I'm just going to take this and cut this off. Okay, so this is, um, this is my little spatula. These are really handy, and these are very inexpensive. These pick this up and helps you keep from breaking it. So this is my flower right here. Now, how am I going to give that dimension? Okay, I'm going to show you how. I've got this little cup here. And uh, these you do buy, but uh, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to buy them. You can use the spoon. There was a couple of things I forgot to get out here. You can use a spoon to do the same thing. You can also use it to drape one over, or you can use the little the little um, 
paint things there to do it. But I'm going to use this because I have it. And I'm going to let that set in here. And that's going to dry like that. Now, um, another thing that you can do, and I do this a lot, and I forgot to get this over here, so I'm going to grab a little bit of foil, and I'm going to get a little container with some water in it. Oops, can't get to that. Okay, let me just grab something over here. I'll get a cup or something. You don't want much water. I just put some in a, in a bowl lid here. This will help seal this flower. Um, and with the foil, you just tear out. This is cheap foil. Do y'all keep cheap foil? I keep cheap foil and I keep good foil. I keep the cheap foil to use for stuff like this. But tear off a little piece and just crinkle it up. And if you're using a spoon or if you're using like a little plastic bowl or something, you can put this pieces of foil underneath here. This one actually is a little bit too big. And you can hold that up. It kind of gives it something to rest on. And you can hold that up. And that makes the that makes the flowers dry in that in that position. Like if you want them to stand up or if you want them to be like that. Now we need something in the middle of this flower so I'm going to do a little tiny I'm not putting the the stamens in it like you would get in the floral department I'm going to use just a little tiny that's about the size of a pea and I'm going to wet my toothbrush uh, my toothbrush my brush here I'm just going to barely wet it I'm going to put a tiny bit of water in it and I'll show y'all I'm going to take the toothbrush my goodness, I keep saying the wrong things this morning. Okay, so I've got my little tiny uh, round thing in there. I'm going to take this paintbrush. I'm going to just gently push it. So you see that? Now, if you want to get like um, a little dimension, these are tweezers for, for this kind of stuff. This is These are not bathroom tweezers. They're, they're flower tweezers. I'm going to just kind of press that just a little bit to make some little dots in there. And I'm going to put a little bit of color on that. I hope that y'all can see that. So it looks like it's something in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to put this one aside because you remember you can't paint it because this is wet. This needs to dry. So that's that one. And then this is the little one here. Now, these are real tedious to work with. They're, uh, they're, um, Mama always could do so much with her hands, holding little tiny beads, and I've never, I've never, it's never been something that I was good at, but, but you get used to doing this after you've done a few, and then, whoops, that one come off, but that's okay, not, not to worry about that. We can fix that. And then, um, Put, push a little bit of hold here again, and we're going to put this in here, and just kind of press it down just a little bit. Now, I have made enough of these to cover an entire cake before, so and it does take some time. It's not something that you can do overnight, and I've told people before when they would uh, call and order a cake, and they would tell me, you know, they just wanted something real simple, and then they would start telling me, what they wanted, and I would explain to them, you know, it's it takes to do fine flowers, depending on the cake and the size of the cake and how many you need, it might take uh, a week or two weeks to do all those flowers because you have to do them in stages. You wanna you wanna roll them out like I've done here, and then you have to um, let them dry, and then you paint them, add luster dust to them, or petal dust. Um, and then if you're going to put any more dimension in them, you've got to uh, wait till that dries and then put another one. So that's a little one there. So that, that's those two. I'll put that aside here. And then um, I'll, just, I'll just briefly, I'm going to do more than one color, but I'll just briefly 
uh, do these. Now you don't have to put any kind of um, oil or butter or anything in these silicone molds. They, they go in and they pop right out. So um, this is a rose here that is actually just like that one. And I have two, I love flowers, I love all flowers, but I have two favorites. And my first, the first, my first favorite flower is peonies. I love peonies. They're so delicate and so uh, dimensional. And to me, it is just God's perfect flower. I absolutely am in awe of those flowers. And I've made them before to put on cakes and they are gorgeous. And my second favorite flower is yellow roses. I love, love, love yellow roses. So this one here, I'm just going to pop it out. The little tiny yellow rose. So I'm just going to set these and these little things to dry. And then, um, let's see, let's roll some out so y'all can see this is my little roller this is a Wilton roller it's for fondant this is a small one there's also a big one that you use to roll fondant out with but um, I have a couple of these and I don't know if you can see this or not but you can see the lines through here so this is this is a uh, roll thin enough so I'm going to do a dogwood and um and then I'll, let's see, since I've already got this rolled out, I'll do a couple more other kinds. Uh, let's see, what do I want to use here? Oh, here's one. I can use this one. These are little filler flowers, and I have to make lots and lots and lots of these when I'm doing the cake. You can put a pearl in the middle, a candy pearl in the middle if you want to, or you can um, do a little tiny piece of fondant. Um, I think I can get one more there. Okay, so I'm going to take this one up. This is my dogwood here. And it doesn't matter if it's if the little sides get a little bit um, ruffled because all flowers are different. It's like God's creations. Uh, we're all made different. We all have our own DNA. We all have our own print. Uh, so that's how flowers are. You look at, I look at flowers as being um, like people. Every one of us is different. God made us that way. And I'm really glad that we are not cookie cutters. I'm glad that we come in all shapes and sizes. We come in all nationalities. We come in all colors. Uh, we come in um, uh, with different accents. So we're, we have our own special uh, blueprint, and I, I believe that God did that on purpose. He could have made every one of us all just alike, but he didn't choose to do that. So I'm, I'm very happy that, and y'all heard, heard me say before, that I, um, I'm glad, I, I'm thankful of who I am. I'm not, I don't think I'm better than anybody. I think every one of us are all equal. And I think that what we make of, make of our life is up to us and God. So um, I've, got my, I've got my flower out here. Now this comes in a set. I think there's three pieces to this. And again, these are very inexpensive. You can get them at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michaels. This is a piece of foam, and then this is the hard foam here. So um, I'm going to take this up, and I'm going to... Put it on here, and I'm going, this is where your little roller ball, ball comes in at, and I'm going to move it over to the, to the phone. So if you'll notice, when I start doing this, this cups the petals, and it makes, it makes them come up with like a little, like they're curved, and the thinner your fondant is, and it will tear, the thinner your fondant is, the better these are. So you see how I've got dimension in that uh, just by doing this little roller thing on here. And um, I'm going to put a little bit of center in the middle. And sometimes I do these 
and I make double petals or I mean or more than more than two sometimes I make multiple pe petals on top of the other and sometimes I'll just do one so I took a little tiny bit of fondant and I put this in the middle and I'm just going to mash it down and then I'm going to use this again and I've got a tool that does this but I'm just using this because I didn't happen to bring the other one in here uh, so I'm just doing a little thing here to make it look like it's um, stamens and when I'm finished with these you're going to actually see that there is some color in the middle um, and I'm going to transfer this to one of my little uh, things here and uh, let's see here I've used both of these I think I'm going to move this one in here because I really would like to have this size see you can tell this one has already started to dry but it's not drying it takes a while for them to dry but I'm going to use this to put in here so when this dries it's going to be dried like this that's how it's going to look. It's going to look like that. And they're very, very pretty. And you can uh, dust, uh, take your brushes and dust color, color and get some dimension on that too. So um, I'll show you real quick how I'll do these here. And then I'll do, I'll do a few more. Um, I'm going to use a little roller on this one because it's a smaller flower. But again, you can put a pearl, a candy pearl, in the middle of these. Um, you don't have to use fondant. I just didn't get the pearls out, so I'm just using a tiny, tiny bit of fondant to put in the middle. Now, any anything other than painting or, or uh, petal dust, you need to do it before it dries. You can't vein it or you can't do any of that after it dries. It has to be when the fondant is um, while it's still wet. So I'm going to uh, put this one over here. And you want them to dry all different ways. You don't want them to be perfect. You want some leaves to be or some petals to be turned the other way, some petals to be turned the right way. So whenever you get your um, flowers, they're going to all look exactly like they would if they were on a on a, on a vine in your yard so I'm just I'm just cupping all these really easy here and these are real tiny so I'll probably just put a little pearl in the middle of these because these are real little you can do variegated colors you can mix your fondant colors you can use um, um, pinks and yellows or, or any color if you want variegated i love variegated flowers so you can do that or you can uh, do a variegated with your paint just remember if you're painting you got to let one color dry before you do another color because if you don't it's gonna if they're gonna mesh together and and they won't it won't be as defined a color so uh let's get these here and i'll show you the spoon method and the um, well, that's, <laughs> you can see I already messed that one up. That spoon's a little bit too big, uh, to do this with, but you can put a flower in a spoon, um, or you can use an egg carton. Um, and again, you can use either side, something ran over that in the, in the, um, refrigerator. So let's turn it upside down and let's try this and see if how this will work. And this is not this is not gonna work for these. These are too little, but you can use it for flowers that are bigger. on your workstation you need to get it up because it will get in your fondant and it will make it a different color than what you want it so um, I'm just gonna 
Let's see, what can I do with these? Um, I think I'll put them, I'll just put them in here. You have to be very careful picking these up because if you pick them up and they, the leaves will break, or the, not the leaves, the petals, I don't, I haven't made any leaves. Um, and I don't think I got any green fondant out and I didn't color any. So, um, probably what I'll do is I'll make some leaves and then use some paint to paint them. So see, I just put those in there. And uh, let's do, let's get another color here and do some pink. I love when I'm doing a cake, I love doing different colors because it makes it a real pretty spring mist mix. And you've got a lot of color and just like a, like wildflowers. I love wildflowers along the side of the highway. And you always see a mix of flowers and a mix of colors. So when I decorate a cake, I think about that. Um, this has got some heart on the end, so I'm just going to cut that off. So if you get some dry pieces of fondant, uh, don't mix that in with what you're doing because it'll it'll be crumbly, just like this is right here. And I learned a long time ago uh, when you're making something with fondant, if you're if you're using if you're making lots of cakes uh, each week, you can you can keep a tub of fondant and use from it, especially like if you're using small amounts. But when you have specialty colors that you've got just to just to decorate a cake with, uh, you're you're not going to be able to use that again. Now I just opened these the other day and they're still good, but you do need to cut the ends of them off uh, because it, when it gets hard, it's you will not get a smooth flour. So, um, when you're calculating costs for something, especially if you're selling it, you need to calculate that in. You won't be able to reduce that fondant, what you have left. It just doesn't work. Now, this is not exactly the pink color that I like, but it doesn't matter because I want different colors in here. So, um, I'm, it doesn't matter if it's this color or if it's another color. Uh, this is a daisy, and this probably should have been done in uh, yellow. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut these out. These are the little roll flowers, the little roll roses. And when I first saw these, I just thought there's no way that's gonna work, but uh, but they do. And I'll show you how this works. And I think I'm pretty sure Walmart carries these. Um, so I want my petals a little bit thinner than they are. So I'm going to um, I'm going to roll these out here just a little bit. Now, when y'all see me decorate the cake tomorrow, I'm hoping that these are going to be dry enough that that you'll actually be able to see the pretty flowers. So you fold it over in half and you just roll it up and it's a rose. Now these are little, they're not big. If you want dimension, you're going to pull the, pull the petals apart, kind of squeeze them together at the bottom and pull them apart at the top. And this makes a this makes a really cute little uh, filling flower too. So I'm just going to lay that one here. And then I'll cut out a big one. It's a little bit bigger. These are super, super thin. And they're really good to, to get your excess fondant off your mat. So um, I hope that y'all will tune in with me tomorrow and see uh, what the flowers look like uh, after I, uh, after they dry and I get some color on them and see how pretty they are. I think I've been on about my time limit, so I may not be able to show y'all everything I had planned to show y'all. I get totally get lost when I'm doing this because it's just, to me, it's so relaxing and so much fun. But you want to overlap that to where they're not, um, 
you know, they're not lined up right together. They, they, they need to be overlapped. And just start rolling and just roll them up. And the more you work with this, the, the better you'll get with it. It's, um, you know, it's, it's kind of something that you have to, that you have to have practice with. But that's that one. And I'll tell you another little trick you can do. And if you want to put foil or toothpick between these petals to, when, so when they dry, they're open, you can cut the end of this off and just use your little spatula or any kind of a knife. And you can cut the end of this off and you've got another little tiny rose there. And I use those a lot too. So you've got this rose and you've got this one. So we'll put those over here. And then I need to, I guess I need to kind of wrap this up pretty quick here. See if there's, um, I'll show you how the leaf does. Now this is not the right color for the leaf. But I'll show you how it does when you put a little bit of, when you don't want much. And these are really inexpensive. Um, put just a tiny bit of this and put it in the middle and bring this over and just mash it. And you've got a nice little leaf there and it's got all the veins in it. And then of course this would need to be colored. It's not fall so it's you wouldn't want a yellow leaf in the spring. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is the big one here, so if you were going to do a big leaf, like for a big flower, like a rose or a, uh, a peony, then you would use this to, um, and this is not going to be, because I don't have enough fondant on here, but you can tell the, um, the real pretty veins and how, how that shows there, which is, uh, makes, it, uh, makes it very pretty. And then one more here, this is another one of the little things that you just put a tiny bit in the middle. I'm using just a, this is a little bit more than a pea. And you just roll it in a little ball. And you see that middle, you want to center it. And if, and if it doesn't center, you can just take it out, roll it up in the ball and do it again. And just bring them together and press them. And I love this little flower here. You can make them big or you can make them little. I use lots of them in fillers. And so, um, let's see, is there anything else I wanted to show you? Well, this is these are sunflowers here, and again, I've already used the yellow that I've got out, but I'll show you um, how cute the sunflower is. These molds are very, very detailed. They have, um, it's probably one reason they cost so much, because they are so detailed, that um, they're really fun to use. And again, I'm not using the right colors. The leaf should be green. And this should be yellow with a brown center. And I have a brown um, petal dust that uh, is cocoa brown. And it almost looks like velvet. So when you, especially like if you did a, like you could do like a three dimension and you could actually put raise this and put a little bit on top and just mash it out so you've got a little bit of three dimension and then using something like this it makes it look like it's um and once you paint it or put uh, petal dust on it you're going to see all those markings in it so that that's a little bit different effect there with that three dimension in it so, um, I didn't get to show y'all everything that I got out, but I'm going to, before I put this up, I'm going to make a bunch more flowers, so I'll have to put on the cake tomorrow. I hope that everyone has enjoyed this. I hope I haven't bored you. Um, it's just, I, it's something that I absolutely love, and when I get started doing this, I can work sitting at this counter literally for hours, because when you start making flowers and they start coming together, and um, it just makes you so happy because they look so pretty. So thank y'all for joining us. Uh, remember Mary and little Linda and Carla. And Chuck, is he's at his house, so um, we don't want him to get this either. Uh, thank you again for 
uh, for supporting me and supporting Mary and I and the girls and Chuck and Mike. And uh, remember to count your blessings and find something happy to do today. It lifts your spirits. That's one thing that Mama taught us from the time we were old enough to know right from wrong. Get busy and stay positive and don't let um, uh, don't let your mind wander to where you're not thinking of happy things. So I love y'all. Mary loves y'all. Um, thank you again so very much from the bottom of our hearts. And be sure, again, to count your blessings. Bye-bye.